Hey folks, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. Today I'm going to talk to you the case of uh, State of Iowa versus Jerry Burns. It's a cold case. Uh, cold case is something that investigators refer to as an old case. Uh, this is a, an old case as in 40 years ago, 1979 to be, uh, to be uh, specific. December of 1979, Michelle Martinko went to get a winter coat at the mall and was later found dead, stabbed to death in her family's vehicle. At the time, DNA was not uh, highly used. They were just beginning DNA. DNA factors, DNA testing became uh, much better year after year. Uh, and they saved the blood from the gear shift in the vehicle and from her dress. They saved her dress. And 40 years later, they test it against a gentleman by the name of Jerry Burns. And what do you got? A positive match. They're, they do an investigation. They look for connecting factors. Do these two people know each other? Were they lovers? Were they friends? Were they acquaintances? Did they work together? And the police can find absolutely no link, no connection between the two. However, his DNA, not just his DNA, but his blood is found on her body, right? On her dress of her dead body and on the gear shift of the vehicle. So at the crime scene. Now, one thing that when I was talking on Law and Crime yesterday that the, the host said was, listen, I can understand, you know, if there was just some DNA, like maybe there was a hair follicle or you know, a piece of hair. Well, you, know, you could have picked that up. You touch things. DNA is transferred all the time. But blood, blood, your blood at a murder scene. Yeah, blood doesn't really get transferred around that much. Doesn't end up on people's dresses. Doesn't end up on the gear shift knob. Uh, of a vehicle where a murder has occurred. So what's the defense? I didn't do it. He tells police during a uh, interview. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't remember doing anything like that. Sort of a what odd response. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a recollection. I mean, people do block out um, bad things. That's sort of a weird thing to say. Um, and then when he's, after he meets with the police, he's taken in a police car, he's handcuffed, he's arrested, he's taken to the station. And there's about a 45 minute ride. So one of the detectives sits in the back seat with him and he starts to talk about his missing uh, brother or brother-in-law. That's odd too. Um, there, there's something about this man that, that comes off as, as very odd. The fact that he didn't jump up and down and say, hey, 1979, I was married. I was 25 years old. I, I didn't live anywhere near that area. I didn't even go to the mall at that time. I had two little children. None of that. Just says, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, sometimes people can block out bad things and right? sort of like a weird sort of confession. So what's the defense? The defense ultimately is going to be, or we're in the middle of the trial now, watch it on Law and Crime. What is the defense? Uh, chain of custody. The taking of the DNA, how it was preserved, how it was kept over the last 40 years. I think that there was a, a flood at the police station and some of these items were in the flood. You know, folks, I don't know on this one. I, I, I rack my brain and I'm going, how would I present the defense on a murder victim from 40 years ago? Even if it happened today, let, let's say it happened a week ago. My defense is like, okay, well, the way they took, well, yeah, but how does my client's DNA appear on somebody in somebody's car that he doesn't know? And then again, it's just not a hair follicle. So it's not like a, a transfer DNA situation where like we shake hands and some of my skin cells go on your hand and maybe you wipe off on your shirt. No, we're talking blood evidence. His blood is on her dress and she's dead and she's been stabbed to death. And 
his blood is on the gear shifter of the vehicle, but he doesn't know her or the family. Guys, I gotta tell you, super difficult defense. I've been watching, I've been commenting. I don't know that Jerry Burns is gonna get out of this one. You know, I am I like to think that I'm pretty imaginative in defenses, but I don't know, you tell me. How could someone's blood of someone, you know, how could my blood get on someone's shifter if I've never been in their vehicle, if I don't know them? How could my blood get on a victim of a murder how do I how does my blood get on her dress I don't see it guys what I see is a big fat guilty I'm real curious about the defense and watching the cross-examination of of the DNA DNA techniques but I, I gotta tell you I don't know how you defend this I, I think that this probably should have been a plea bargain but 40 years right time witnesses in, in the defense game, we always say that the, that time is our friend the longer a case takes. Well, geez, have you ever heard of a 40-year case? The case doesn't go to 1979. Half the people watching this video weren't alive in 1979. This man, Jerry Burns, is 66 years old now. 40 years after the crime, he's being you know, placed on trial for murder. I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. Tell me what you think. Share the video and please subscribe.